Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another breakfast chat, which is many people's favorite segment. I'm sitting here eating bison rice and drinking cranberry juice. And let's talk about the two types of hard gainers that are out there, because this is a term that gets used a lot. And in my experience, it's easily fixable. Uh, for, for the first type of hard gainer, it's not a real problem. It's they have a psychological hang up or they have no appetite and they're just simply not willing to eat. And then we have the type two, which has a genetic component, which requires a change in training. Now for the type one hard gainer, this is usually the guy, as I like to describe and jokingly say, in fact, I made a status uh, for um, other coaches and lifters and clients on my private Facebook yesterday saying, a hard gainer is a male who thinks 2,200 calories is a lot of food and they spend 50% of their gym time doing curls, okay? And then I have tons of dietitians and coaches chime in making jokes, laughing. Uh, you know, again, yeah, talking about 2,200 calories of chicken breast is a lot of food. But that really is your, your type one. It's guys who have a psychological hang-up about gaining fat, so they're not willing to actually bulk. And here's the difference between a type one and a type two. You can tell immediately. Okay, a type one usually doesn't follow a good structured program, and if they do, they still don't eat. A type 1 hard gainer has abs year-round, okay? Always. Type 1 hard gainer has a six-pack. That's the guys who don't eat, <clears throat> okay? That is the guys who don't eat. They're starving themselves and convincing themselves that, they, that they're not eating or that they are eating, that they're eating. I eat a ton of food, bro. No, you don't or you would gain weight. In other words, the guy who doesn't gain weight, we know the laws of biology and thermodynamics. We know that it's not possible. There's no way it's that you have a fast metabolism. And if your metabolism is fast enough that you're eating 4,000 calories and you still weigh 140 pounds, you need to see a doctor immediately because you either have cancer or you're an undiagnosed type one diabetic or you have a massive parasite in your gut. All three of those are medical issues. They're not a training issue. The type two, the type two gains nothing but fat. So they bulk and they put on 15 pounds of body weight. They have no trouble gaining weight, okay? The type two hard gainer can go from 150 to 170. And their bench goes from 135 to 140 while gaining 20 pounds of fat. Their squat goes up five pounds while gaining 20 pounds of fat, okay? They gain almost exclusively fat, which is a real problem because your strength should go up that much even if you don't lift. In other words, if I were to test your one rep max on lifts as a non-lifter and we put 20 pounds of fat on you just from bulking with no training, your squat, bench, and deadlift would all go up. All your strength would go up if we were to measure it. Your muscle mass would go up. So they're clearly not getting appropriate training stimulus. 100% of their muscle growth is coming from their overeating. Okay? And there's usually a genetic component there. So the solution for the type one is they have to eat more food. They have to lose their neurotic mindset. And I have had numerous coaches who we talk to about this say over and over and over and over and over. The skinny hard gainer is a neurotic eater. They don't like food. They're scared of gaining fat. They eat clean. All right. That's the guy who eats chicken, broccoli, and brown rice. You can't gain weight. Almost every single time. And I found that to be true with a lot of my lifters, even though they claimed they wanted to gain fat. Well, they're still stuffing themselves full of high fiber, slow digesting food. Right? They're stuffing themselves full of chicken breast and oats and brown rice and Brussels sprouts. Okay. Foods that are made to help fat people lose weight. Like that is how you eat when you are fat and you want to lose weight. That is not how you gain muscle. Terrible idea. All right. Fixable. They need to eat foods that are easier to digest, foods that are easier to assimilate, foods that don't blow up their stomach and stop worrying about is it clean. And I'm not saying they should eat junk food. I'm not telling them to go eat bacon cheeseburgers or pizza all day. That's not what we're saying. But, you know, again, red meat and rice would probably be better than chicken breast, oats, brown rice. You know, they can replace all the vegetables they're eating with orange juice. problem solved. They're not eating unhealthy by doing that. 
that they don't eat enough. They simply do not eat enough, period. And they have to learn to eat more. And if you're in a first world country and you tell me you can't figure out how to eat enough, look at all these fat people running around. Look at what they do. They don't have any trouble gaining weight. Okay? They have no trouble at all. It's, we have easy access to high calorie foods. The type two hard gainer is training volume resistant. And this tends to follow ethnic lines and I'm not gonna get into all of that. Um, but I will say as a general rule, if you come from a part of the world, a little section of the world, I don't care whether it's Poland or, or whatever, and the people from your area are known for gaining size and strength, you are not genetically a hard gainer. You come from an area where everyone has no muscle and has 10 inch biceps even who go to the gym, okay, you might be this type two hard gainer. And we can, we can leave it at that. It tends to, it's very genetic. And what we see are men who have a lower muscle fiber density and they have a lower ratio of fast twitch versus slow twitch fibers. Now keeping in mind, all humans are slow twitch dominant. That is a characteristic of homo sapien irrespective of where you come from in the world. That is intrinsic to the human species. We are all slow twitch endurance dominant. We are an endurance dominant species. We're better distance runners than we are lifters. It's why humans cannot run a horse in a foot race given enough time. Given enough hours and days, a human cannot run down a horse in an open field. Okay, we're endurance. And I'm not making that up, that has been tested. And we know that historically, that's how humans caught the first horses. You have some people who have an even greater ratio. But usually when you watch them train, they struggle to develop any bar speed. They struggle with explosiveness. Uh, they usually have poor body awareness. So the first thing you have to do with those sort of lifters is teach them how to actually squeeze the bar hard, how to brace their core, how to explode, because they don't have a natural tendency to be explosive. Therefore, a lot of their, any, anything that they do that is a sub-maximal or sub-failure set, they tend to get very, very, very bad stimulus from it because they don't get quality reps because they're not moving the weight fast enough. So if they run a program like 531, and this is a textbook example, number one, they have way more endurance fibers. They need a little bit more volumes and reps. They, they just do. People who are balanced grow just fine off triples and fives as a novice. They'll grow just fine. People who are, have that sort of genetic setup, heavy triples, especially if they're not a three rep max, because they aren't usually, uh, they're getting very, very little training response. Same thing, they run a big but boring template, they won't gain a single drop of muscle. They'll gain nothing. They will gain nothing from that template because the, the quality of volume is too low. These are people who need more effective volume. So you put them on a template like that where their main lifting where their main lifting is just very, very low volume heavy, is people who have very few uh, fast twitch fibers, they struggle to gain muscle from that. And then if their volume work is, is not close to failure, because let's say you're doing 50 or 60% for tens, you, they will see absolutely nothing from that. They will not gain a single drop of muscle from that supplemental work. And even people with good genetics barely gain any. Those sort of templates are really for guys on drugs. But I digress. Over to the point. That's exactly what I've seen with lifters who they run 531 and they only get to a 300 pound deadlift and a 180 pound bench while doing it for a year. Okay, that's a hard gainer. And when they bulk, they, they gain weight and they gain body fat and almost no strength. They gain 20 pounds of fat and their deadlift goes from 290 to 300 over 12 months. Okay, that's a hard gainer. Your solution, they need more, more reps. They need more reps. I'm not saying you can't run them on conjugate. I run those guys on conjugate. And we do maxes and we do speed work, but we teach them how to explode. They have to learn how to move their body and to get tight and to explode. And then all of their supplemental lift is very, is very high reps to pretty much to failure. In other words, what do we mean? If they're doing tens, they go at least 70% of their max. Not 60, not 50. They won't gain any muscle from that. They will not gain anything if you do. Their sets need to be to failure or within one rep of failure. So that means about 70% for 10s. They do 20s, it better be 50%. So they wouldn't be doing 10s of 50%, they need to do 20. And that's how they have to train. 
And that, and that is how I train those guys. And when you do that, all of a sudden, magically, a guy who's had a 300 deadlift for a year can suddenly not bulk really. He can go on maintenance because he's skinny fat. And his deadlift goes up to 400 pounds. Okay, his 200 squat turns into a 315. Right? His 170 bench turns into a 225. That's, that's what ends up happening. This is how you fix the type 2. It's a, it's, it is a training programming solution based around genetics. Okay? And it's that straightforward. But those guys are always characterized by they gain weight just fine. It's just all fat. They don't gain muscle or strength to a significant degree when training if they don't have really good training programming. Okay? They, they can't respond to garbage. It just won't happen. Whereas in a very genetically gifted lifter can run garbage programs. They can run garbage programs and they gain enormous amounts of lean muscle and strength. Okay? So there's a genetic component. But if the guys don't gain weight, if, if you struggle to actually put on scale weight, you can't easily put on 10 pounds, you're a type 1. Okay, you're the type 1, you're not the type 2. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.